Um, you mentioned life on other planets. You know, we're seeing these this new web telescope that's showing us all these incredible oh, yes. places everywhere. Yeah. What do you think we're going to find when, I guess, when we find life on other planets? Do you think we'll see it in your lifetime? I hope we do. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty convinced there is life elsewhere. Um, I think it'd be astonishing if, the, if we were the only one. Does there have to be? It, no, it doesn't. There doesn't have to be because, I mean, just suppose that the origin of life is a quite stupendously improbable event, just so improbable that it will only happen in one in 10 to the 22 okay. planets. And the universe isn't infinite. There are 10 to the 22. Uh, I mean, it, it, or okay, let's say 10, 10, to, 10 to the 30. Right. Um, uh, that's more than there are in the observable universe. Okay. And so if it, if it did happen only once, that once is here because here we are talking about it. So it's not impossible that we are the only place in the universe where life has arisen. Um, that would have the corollary that we're wasting our time trying to work out how the origin of life happened because it's so improbable that it's, you don't get to replicate it. Um, I don't believe that for a moment, but, it, but if, if, it, if it was that improbable, then, um, the on, then if, if, if there is only one planet in the universe where there is light, then of course it has to be here, and, and so that's the anthropic principle. Um, but suppose that it's not that improbable, but so improbable that there are only um, a billion life forms in the universe. Well, a billion is a tiny number um, compared to the number of planets, stars in the universe. So if there are only a billion life forms in the universe, then they could be so spaced out that they never get a chance to know each other. They just one there is one there. I mean, they're so far away that they they they, 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 they don't ever encounter each other. They they might by by sheer luck encounter each other, but it, but so that's my pessimistic view. I su I suspect that there are there is, there is life elsewhere, but it may be so rare that we never encounter it. I I very much hope we do encounter it, and um, I think it's very worthwhile spending money on SETI, this search for extraterrestrial intelligence. In, in intelligence, because they're doing it by radio and um, radio telescopes, and um, it's got to be intelligent life or it won't have the technology to produce. If, if we ever discovered physical life, if we actually, actually saw it in our, in, by our eyes, if we, if we found it elsewhere in the solar system, on Enceladus or Right. or somewhere, or Titan, um, immediately that would mean that the universe is simply crawling with life. If, right. if, 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 it's, if it's arisen twice in one solar system, right. then it's got to be a highly probable event. Yeah. Um, and that would be very exciting, but it would only be sort of bacterial type life. Um, SETI, on the other hand, is, is, is looking for t intelligent life because um, only intelligent life could produce beams of, or, or broadcasting, right. expanding shells of, 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 of radio waves. Um, and I think both enterprises are thoroughly worthwhile. I'm, I thoroughly approve of exploring the universe, not just, well, uh, including to try to find life. Um, and the, the fact that it hasn't happened so far could just mean that we haven't Develop the technology so far, and, 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 and with new telescopes, we, we shall do it. And with spacecraft going to, uh, um, there's, a, there's a, a good, there's a lobby of people wanting to, to go to Enceladus, where, where, where there's looks that there might be just a possibility of life. I highly unlikely, but just possible. And I think it's worth spending the money to go there and see. Right. And that's kind of one of the last chapters of the book, is you talk about us wanting to to fly to other places and create other yes. systems. And you do dedicate the book to the Elon Musk, I think, who's trying to go to Mars. And yes. you, think, you think that's a good idea. I do. That was fascinating um, for you I to mean, hear that. I mean, I'm not sure about um, 
about hu sending humans in, in, into space because that's enormously adds to the expense because of the, the safety factor. You need to, you need to bring them back. Yeah. Um, Psychologically, it's hard to Yes. Um, but exploring space by instrumentation, by telescopes and by unmanned rockets and unmanned spacecraft, um, I thoroughly approve of. And insofar as, as humans are needed to, to do that, I approve of that too. I mean, I, I, I believe in what I call in the last chapter of of flights of fancy, I call it the outward urge, yeah. a phrase of John Wyndham, the science fiction writer. Um, I, I, it's one of the noblest features of the human spirit is this this urge to explore. And I, I make a, 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 in that chapter, I make an analogy between the scientists' urge to explore mentally, and the great explorers of the past, like Leif Erikson and Christopher Columbus and Ferdinand Magellan, um, exploring the world and now. now Elon Musk exploring, wanting to go to Mars and exploring space and so on. Um, I think it's a it's a very very noble human feature, the outward urge. Now explain this to me because when I used to hear Elon talk about, you know, looking for Mars as a potential place maybe for humans to live. Well, like, yes, that's right because um, this is not. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Right. Um, the the um, evolution. We are we are vulnerable on one on one planet, and um, at any time, um, life could be extinguished on any one planet. And one way this can happen is if we get hit by a projectile bigger than the one that killed the dinosaurs sixty five million years ago. Um, and that's going to happen. I mean, it, it, it ev eventually it, w it will happen. Long it may, enough timeline. It, it, right. it, it may be that uh, very likely that humans won't be here anymore anyway by then. In which case, it, um, to have a two-planet civilization rather than a one-planet civilization immediately hugely increases your chance that one or other of them right. will survive. Of course, Mars is just likes to be hit by by an asteroid, but they won't both be hit by the same one. Right. Um, so, um, and, th and that has actually re a resonance with, uh, with another chapter in the book um, about the, um, um, the, but the, the Darwinian um, survival value of sending some of your offspring to distant places, however hostile those places may be. Um, there's a, a mathematical argument which I like. Um, given that a parent has already survived long enough to reproduce, it must be in a pretty good place. So the temptation might be to plant your offspring in the very same place. But in the long run, that very same place is going to be hit by a catastrophe of some sort, like a forest fire or an earthquake or a flood or something. And so sending some of your offspring to a di distant place, however improbable it is that they'll find a better place, nevertheless, it's bound to be better in, in the sense that, that, s that sooner or later the, the present place, however good it will be, is, is again, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Yeah, diversification, which means survival of the fittest. Yes. If you do all that. Yes. And if we have people on Mars, we actually might survive yes. as a species for the next million years, and we yes. might not if we don't. But, well, I, I have to say, survival of the fittest is not about differential species survival, but nevertheless, the, the argument remains yes. Right. I'm looking for partners, collaborators, colleagues who want to join forces with me around the globe and create real value, generational wealth, and financial freedom for everyone else around the world. Get involved in the cryptocurrency markets. Get involved in the NFT markets. This is your moment. Life all comes down to a few moments. Don't let this pass. Now it's not too late, next year's gonna to be too late. Ultimately, this is about freedom. That's the way I see it. This is about giving power back to the people and enabling billions of people worldwide to use the financial markets to improve their lives and those of their friends and their families and their communities. Honestly, I think it's a violation of human rights not to allow people basic access to financial services. Because right now, people are being kept in the dark. They're being robbed of education, and it's a travesty. And so I'm looking for people that want to join me and be a part of this solution. And that all happens inside the DeFi Academy. The gains my students are making are absolutely amazing. 
double, triple digit gains in the first month alone. That's amazing. This will change your life. Now is the time to get involved. I'm gonna tell you exactly how my students in my academy made money in the last 30 days. I'm talking about real trading results. And let me just whet your appetite a little bit. Let me hit you with some numbers. I'm talking Brendan from New Zealand is up 68.77% on the month. Steve from Europe up 83%. Albert in Singapore up 169.9% on one single trade. I got Susan up 153% on her call options alone. Also rocking 139% returns and 442% returns as well on individual trades. These are people that are changing their financial future in the last 30 days, but it's based on trading discipline. I've graduated over 500 students from inside my academy from over 54 countries around the world. It's amazing. When it comes to crypto, DeFi, and blockchain, we love this space. We truly believe it's the future. This is down to our core. It's authentic to what we're doing, and everybody can tell through the camera because you can't make this stuff up. If you're watching me now, wherever you are, I implore you, take 60 seconds right now and join my academy. Apply today. Now you've got a chance. Life all comes down to a few moments. What are you gonna do? What's the choice that you're going to make?